Oh, hello, everybody. We are uh, we are going to, to start with the, the seminar, the webinar of the International PhD School on Advanced Association Processes. Uh, this webinar is in, in, in the exclude of the several webinars I'm going to, to present uh, in this school. And today we have the pleasure to, to have uh, Professor Jose Antonio Sanchez Perez, who is going to, to talk us about the photophenton process and the fundamentals and application to wastewater treatment. This webinar is in, in the frame of the International PhD School. I'm going to introduce the, this uh, PhD school. Uh, this, uh, this school is, it was an initiative initiative of uh, academic and scientific uh, in a beginning in the beginning of from European groups but uh, in the last year uh, several groups from other countries has been involved in the in the school and now we change the name from European PhD school to uh, international PhD school on advanced oxidation processes. The, the objective of this school, the, the first objective is, objective is to promote the higher education of young scientific in the in the research of uh, advanced association processes. This uh, <coughs> international PhD school is coordinated by the professor Luigi Rizzo from the University of Salerno and uh, we have a uh, Sixto Malato as coordinator of the European uh, partners and uh, Professor Ricardo Torres Palma uh, coordinating the Latin American uh, partners. Is, uh, the school is formed by 69 scientific committees members from uh, 49 institutions from 21 different countries. Uh, up to now, we have uh, 100 and uh, 160 PhD students and 46 alumni. Uh, this uh, the international PhD school uh, include different initiatives that can be summarized in the organization of a specific training event, uh, promoting the working and collaborating among school members, and uh, one of the Okay, uh, the hour, the awarding of the international PSD uh, on advanced association process with the award for the for thesis in these fields. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to to be part of the uh, PhD school as PhD student, uh, uh, you have to to comply and two basic criteria that is that that the thesis is need to be in, in the in the frame of the abundance of education processes in this field and uh, that the supervisor the supervisor uh, has to be member of the of the school mm -hmm. but if you want to 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 apply for the for the school you have you can uh, put in, in contact with Luigi Rizzo. Uh, you have here. You have the the, the email. Mm -hmm. yeah, here are some pictures about uh, the international PhD <coughs> PhD school. And one of the most important activities of the PhD school is the organization of summer school. Uh, we have uh, organized three organized uh, three three school in different different summers from from 2015 in Salerno the first one in, in Porto in Portugal and, and the last one in in Alcoy unfortunately the the pandemic the COVID pandemic uh, has uh, for that uh, this is the, the last one we have organized um, but we have uh, uh, the intention of continuing with these uh, summer schools in a in a face-to-face -face mode. Mm -hmm. But uh, to because of the pandemic, also we have organized uh, several uh, webinar program for the 
21 goals that uh, in, and in this Excel is include the, the webinar of the of the professor Jose Antonio Sanchez Perez, which is going to, to be today. Mm. If you want more information about this seminar, the webinar, you can go to the to the information in the website of the the PhD school. Mm. Uh, Professor Jose Antonio Sanchez Perez is going to present this uh, this webinar. He's a full professor at the Department of Chemical Engineering of the University of Almería in Spain. He's also he's director of the Solar Energy Research Center, CSOL, and he's also director of the University Chair Aqualia about the integral, integral water cycle. He has supervised uh, 19 PhD thesis in Thesis in, in different fields, such as uh, biotechnology of microalgae, filamentous spongy, fermentation, and water treatment. He's author of more than 170 uh, scientific publications in International Journal of High Impact, and currently is involved in five national and international research projects, all of them about solar water treatment, disinfection, and contamination and contaminants emerging contact removal uh, using the photofendon process for for wastewater reuse. Mm. Uh, Professor Sanchez Perez has developed his uh, research line in the solar energy research centers PSOL, since, since the foundation in in 20 uh, in 2005. PSOL is a joint center between the University of Almería and the Plataforma Solar de Almería. The center is located on the northern side of the University of Almería and in, in a single store building, built with the support of, the, of a European project, Arfrisol, about bioclimatic architecture and solar cooling. In this sense, TSOL was built using bioclimatic standard and solar cooling uh, and it's designed in climate uh, and uh, efficient energy use. Um, in this center, there is, uh, is an interdisciplinary center in which we have the different professionals, um, like physics, chemists, biologists, industrial engineers, and chemical engineers. Uh, some of the of the objectives of this or the focus of this uh, center is the medium and high temperature solar thermal energy, the design optimization of solar thermal cooling within system, system, the water treatment, and also the integration of solar thermal photovoltaic energy in building. <laughs> uh, here we have the, the structure of, of CSOL and, and I don't go to to give you more information about the about the center, but uh, the center includes six uh, fundamental uh, say unit fundament uh, unit function and and, and many undergraduate uh, master students develop their curricular practice in the center since the foundation in a large percentage from the from the University of Almeria, but in, in some case uh, from other uh, Spanish and European uh, universities. In this sense, there's also many PhD students have done stays in the center, making collaboration in the frame of the SPERA project. Here you, you have the, the information, which is a, an Oricon project um, with the uh, and the, the aims of this project is to boast uh, scientific collaboration among the leading European research institution in solar technologies, offering uh, European research and industry access to the best uh, research and test infrastructures and creating a virtual European lab. For Sanchez Perez is the one of the uh, Functional unit of TSOL is the is uh, the water treatment unit. Uh, Pro Professor Sanchez Perez is the head of this unit, which is focused on the photocatalysis for the removal of toxic substances and water disinfection 
and its combination with advanced biological methods. In this end, he worked on the use of solar and UV LED photophenton for decontamination and disinfection of wash water, and the optimization of the operation and development of new technology and water treatment economics also. And in this uh, research line, you see, this is the, the frame of the, of the webinar. It's going to present by by the Professor Sanchez Perez. I don't know if uh, Professor Sanchez Perez, you are ready to to share your screen and and start with the with the webinar. Okay. okay. Thank yeah. you, Professor Luis, for your nice uh, introduction. I would like to thank to uh, the international PhD for inviting me to this talk. And I'm going to share my, my presentation. I hope you, you can see the presentation. Yes. OK. So as uh, said, said before, the, the title is Solar Photophenton Process, Fundamentals and Application to Wastewater Treatment. First of all, we will speak about the, some fundamentals of the photophenton process, starting uh, with the main reaction uh, in, involved in the, in, in, the, in the process. These are uh, the, the fenton reaction, that is the uh, hydrogen peroxide with uh, ferrous ion, giving ferric ion and an hydroxyl radical. This reaction is very fast. And uh, the second reaction is the photoreduction of uh, iron-3, giving again iron-2 and another hydroxyl radical. This reaction is slow and depends on fondant availability. So uh, if we add both reaction, we can see, as in the picture, a redox cycle between iron-2 and iron-3 with the conception of hydrogen peroxide and the release of hydroxyl radicals. And this reaction is driven by UVA radiation that can be uh, can came from the sun or from uh, artificial light. As for the reactions, once we have formed the hydroxyl radicals, we have a set of uh, efficient reactions, uh, that is mainly the oxidation of the organic matter present in the water, giving oxidized organic matter and releasing uh, CO2. To this, uh, this is a chain reaction with uh, the radicals, and uh, this uh, mechanism uh, gives rise to the uh, release of CO2 and is called mineralization. One of these reactions, if we consider only one of these reactions, we can uh, take into account the uh, attack of the hydroxyl radical to a given contaminant, giving um, transformation products, uh, that is uh, organic matter, oxidized organic matter, without considering the release of CO2. But uh, along with the, this efficient reaction, we have another set of inefficient reactions that are uh, the reaction of hydrogen peroxide with radicals in different steps, giving finally uh, water and uh, molecular oxygen, or the reaction radicals with radicals giving to uh, water and oxygen. So this inefficient reaction gives rise to the release of oxygen. The photophenton process is strongly dependent on the pH. Iron-3 is photoactive and soluble at uh, acidic pH, and uh, the value pH 2.8 uh, uh, 
has been reported as optimal. But we can operate the photofenton process and neutral pH too. In this case, we have two main problems. Iron precipitation to the, the neutral pH and the presence of bicarbonates, uh, which are a scavenger of hydroxyl radicals. To solve the, pro the problem of iron precipitation, uh, we can use uh, ion ejecting uh, co complexing agents. And among the different uh, uh, complexing agents, the most popular is EDDS because it's biodegradable and it's stable in uh, water solution. <clears throat> When designing a photofenton reactor, it's very important uh, to consider uh, some factors. First, we will see what are the inputs in the uh, design process. We, we need to consider the type of this water. It, this has a paramount influence in the process. Along with the flow rate very close to the type of wastewater, we have the con contaminant concentration. And the type of contaminants, if we want to remove chemical contaminants or biological contaminants. And finally, the process target, mineralization, decontamination, or disinfection, or uh, all of them at once, okay? So the process target is very, very important. The next set of uh, conditions we have to take into account is the operating condition for the reactor. That is, what is the radiation availability or the kind of radiation we're, we're going to, to use, the solar or artificial uh, uh, radiation. We need to choose the pH acidic or neutral, the iron soup and its concentration, and finally, the HO2 concentration we want to use in the, in the treatment. As outputs, taking into account all these factors, we will be able to calculate the reaction kinetics uh, with these uh, kinetics, we can obtain the reactant consumption and reaction time if we work in batch mode or the hydraulic residence time if we work in continuous flow mode. Reaction kinetics and, and the operation mode will give us the tools to calculate the reactor size that is the liquid depth, liquid depth and the surface area, and finally, the cost of the treatment. We should pay attention to the impact of pollutant concentration. As I said before, it's very close uh, or closely related to the kind of sewage water to be treated. In the case of highly polluted uh, effluent, that is uh, toxic wastewater, typically industrial wastewater, the contaminant concentration uh, should be in the range from milligrams per liter to grams per liter. In this case, the target of the treatment is the organic matter mineralization along with the biodegradability enhancement. To this end, we need a great amount of hydroxyl radicals and to obtain this uh, amount we need to work with high concentration of ion typically 20 milligrams per liter and high concentration of hydrogen peroxide typically 1000 milligrams per liter as uh, we are going to work with small volume of water we can work at uh, acidic ph and the treatment time is uh, generally uh, measured in hours. So it's long treatment. 
A very different uh, scenario is uh, observed when treating effluents containing microcontaminants. As is the case for treated uh, urban uh, wastewater, uh, where the contaminant concentration is in the range of nanogram per liter, microgram per liter. That is 1,000, 1 million times lower than when treating uh, industrial wastewater. In this case, the target of the treatment should be uh, the parent compound uh, removal and the toxicity uh, removal, the chronic toxicity removal, because uh, normally this kind of water has no acute toxicity, but uh, it, show, it shows certain uh, chronic toxicity. To this aim, we need a, a low amount of hydroxyl radicals, and therefore we use low concentration of ion, uh, typically 5 mg per liter, and hydrogen peroxide between 30 and 50 mg per liter. As uh, we pursue to work with uh, large volumes of uh, water, uh, we, we try to work at a neutral pH, and in this case, the treatment time is in, in minutes. So the process is much faster than when we treat toxic uh, wastewater. The next uh, parameter we need to take into account uh, between the fundamentals or among the fundamentals of the photophenton process is the radiation. To take into account the effect of radiation, we use different uh, variables. One of them is the normalized illumination times, the now uh, T30 watts. It's a uh, normalized time which uh, use as a reference the UVS solar power of 30 watts per square meter. So is the time of treatment equivalent to an irradiance of 30 watts per square meter. Another uh, variable is the accumulated solar uh, UV energy and received per uh, unit of volume of, of water. Now as uh, QUV, in kilojoules per liter, and uh, this is an accumulative amount of energy uh, re received in the system. Both QUV and T30 watts take into account the irradiance reaching the surface, but not the reactor geometry. And they are useful in case of the reaction rate is limited by light availability. Nonetheless, the most useful uh, variable is the volumetric rate of photon absorption, the VRPA, which combined the effect of uh, ion concentration, the irradiance reaching the reactor surface, the optical properties of the absorbing species, and the liquid depth. Uh, the calculation is a little more complicated than the QUV or the T30 watts, but it allows to take into account the uh, radiation in the kinetics of the process. We can consider both the solar fractions, the direct and diffuse, in order to have a complete picture of the radiation inside the reactor. To finish this uh, little or the shorter revision to the fundamentals of the photophenton process, I would like to uh, speak about the different steps from the water, the kind of water we want to treat and the treatment goal, and the different steps we need to, to take and before the full-scale uh, design of a solar photophenton plant. At uh, lab scale, Starting from the wastewater characteristics, we can develop a model, a kinetic model. This kinetic model uh, should be validated at uh, pilot plan scale using environmental conditions. And once the model is validated, 
taking into account the plant location and the historical data of temperature and uh, UV radiation, we can proceed with the design of the uh, reactor. So next, I will show you some uh, uh, study cases of the application of the photophenton, uh, the solar photophenton process. First, uh, I will show you some uh, research uh, about the treatment of, to of toxic uh, with water, in this case, industrial uh, effluents. Remind, uh, we, the effluent has highly toxic substances. We work at acidic pH, and we have a high concentration of pollutants, tens or hundreds of milligrams per liter. And the treatment targets are the organic matter mineralization and the biodegradability enhancement by partial oxidation of the pollutants. We have here uh, some research from the treatment of a mixture of five uh, pesticides with an initial concentration of five, by, uh, 500 milligrams per liter and the target of the treatment was to reach a 40% of mineralization. In the figure, we can see how the pesticides are uh, degraded much faster than the removal of dissolved organic matter in the medium, that is the mineralization. We have a high consumption of um, hydrogen peroxide, in this case, we work adding uh, uh, different amounts of 200 milligram per liter of hydrogen peroxide to avoid uh, the inefficient reactions. And as main features, we can say that we consume uh, more uh, around one gram per liter of hydrogen peroxide to reach this target, 40% mineralization. This mineralization uh, allow the biodegravity of the of the wet water treated, and we need long reaction times, around four hours of treatment at four third, uh, uh, a forty uh, no forty no sorry thirty watts per square meter. We can have a kinetic model of the system taking into, into account the elementary rate laws of the different reaction uh, taking part in the, in the process and uh, fitting this uh, model to the experimental data, we can use the model to predict the evolution of the dissolved organic carbon, the consumption of hydrogen peroxide, or the release of oxygen due to the inefficient reactions. The next uh, case is the microbluton removal in treated uh, with water. We know that the wastewater treatment plants are efficient for uh, chemical and biological oxygen uh, demand abatement as well as the removal of some nutrients, mainly nitrogen and, and phosphorus. But in the treated water, we can find some microcontaminants, mainly uh, pharmaceuticals and some uh, uh, pesticides that can be removed from the treated water by a tertiary treatment, in this case, the photophenton process. Here, I show some uh, experimental uh, results at uh, neutral pH hmm, to change uh, the, the former example was at acidic pH. Now I'm going to show you some results at neutral pH. First, at lab scale, okay, when we work with the complex <coughs> iron-3 EDDS as iron source, with a low amount of uh, hydrogen peroxide, and uh, uh, the, 
synthetic wastewater was picked with uh, 100 uh, microgram per liter of uh, acetamipate. It's a pesticide, a neonicotinoid. And here we have only some results to illustrate uh, what happens when we work at low ion concentration. As we can see in this figure, when we increase the irradiance from 10 to 30 uh, watts per square meter, um, from 10 to 30, we observe an increase in the reaction rate. That is, the process was photolimited. But when we increase the irradiance from 30 to 50 watts per square meter, we don't observe an increase in the reaction rate. So in this case, we have an excess of uh, uh, photons and we can say that the reaction is photosaturated. The same effect of photolimitation and photosaturation, depending on the irradiance availability, is observed with the complex iron 3 DDS, which is uh, partially decomposed by the action of the photons. We see that, or we can see here the picture, that increasing irradiance from 10 to 30, we have an increase in the reaction rate, and later, at higher va values, we have the same photosaturation process. The kinetics at neutral pH are uh, commonly more complex that, uh, than at um, acidic pH. We have more reaction involved in the, in the process, releasing hydroxyl radicals, and uh, the reaction of hydroxyl radicals with intermediate compounds. But as shown at acidic pH, we can work with the same uh, methodology, starting from the rate low equation. We can fit the model to the experimental data in order to obtain the model parameters. And here we have two examples of uh, the fit of the model to, uh, to the experimental results with uh, no, four very different conditions, five centimeters of liquid death and 10 watts per square meter, or 15 centimeters of liquid death and 40 watts per square meter. We can observe that the model properly fit the experimental results. The next step in the study was the model validation at pylon plant scale. In this case, we use a raspberry pond reactor, RPR, and we validated the results, uh, the model obtained with uh, kinetic parameter from lab scale experiments at uh, pilot plant scale in two different days of the year, in winter and uh, in spring. And as shown in the figure, again, we can see a proper fit of the model or a proper prediction, in this case, prediction better, of the model to the uh, experimental results. With this research, as the treatment time when dealing with uh, micropollutant removal are very short, uh, in a, a few minutes, the uh, continuous flow operation becomes a requirement for large-scale photophenton process. So in this case, I would like to show you uh, different uh, results carried out at pilot plant scale with uh, actual wastewater in two different operating conditions, uh, acidic pH and neutral pH. Uh, with equivalent uh, amount of ion, but different source of ion, and the same amount of uh, hydrogen peroxide. Here we have uh, well, a scheme of the reactor and a scheme of the treatment. From the preconditioning of the uh, actual uh, secondary FUN, coming from the wastewater treatment plant FUN of the city of Almeria, here we have the solar uh, photophenton reactor. 
the water enters continuously to the reactor, as well as the ion solution and the hydrogen peroxide solution, and uh, exit the reactor. And after we have a neutralization step when we work at acidic pH, or a filtration when we work when we work at neutral pH. Here we have a little video of the um, pilot plant working with the reactor and the neutralization column. And here we have the results. Uh, don't be afraid because I want, I'm going to explain all the results step by step. But I would like to show you that here we have uh, results from the experiment at acidic pH and a neutral pH with three different uh, hydraulic residence time, 50 minutes, 20 minutes, and 30 minutes, carried out in different days, in May and April uh, 19, 2019, 2019, where we can follow and we use, that is very interesting too, different uh, batches of uh, uh, real secondary effluents, hmm? up to four different batches with different initial concentration of uh, uh, microcontaminants. As for iron, no? the, the profile of iron during the experiments, we can observe that acidic pH, we have a partial loss of uh, ion due to the reaction with uh, phosphate, the precipitation of uh, ferric phosphate. And at neutral pH, we have a precipitation of iron 2 due to the decomposition of the iron 3 EDDS complex. Okay. We observe too that iron 3 EDDS complex concentration increases as HRT decreases that is expected uh, following the kinetic uh, model. As for the hydrogen peroxide consumption, uh, we obtain more or less the same consumption at uh, both pHs. And in this case, the HO2 conversion increases as HRT, uh, HRT increases too, okay? This is expected to following the kinetics. And uh, considering the removal of microproductants, uh, contaminants of emerging concern, in this case, we see in the, in the feature, or we can see that at uh, 30 or 20 minutes of HRT, we obtain almost the same removal, a little bit more at acidic pH or higher at acidic pH than at uh, neutral pH, but in both cases, around 80% of microproductants are removed, are, are removed in continuous flow operation of the pilot plant scale reactor. With this uh, research and uh, using the previously uh, developed kinetics model at acidic pH and at a neutral pH, we apply these models to the actual wet water, considering the removal of three um, different contaminants of emerging concern. Um, the gabapentin, ortodismethyl vela vaccine, and ortodismethyl tramadol. Okay, this is an example at uh, neutral pH, and we can see how the model properly predicts the evolution of the uh, CEC removal for the two HRT uh, aside. Okay, uh, 30 minutes and 20 minutes. So, with this uh, picture, we can uh, conclude that we have 
a model, a, a, kinetic, a kinetic model at acidic pH or at neutral pH, able, able to predict the performance of the reactor with real effluents. So, taking into account uh, this, uh, mo this model, we can uh, calculate the treatment capacity of the, si of the system, taking uh, a 10 hour operation per day as a reference. And in this graph, or in this picture, we can uh, obtain the treatment capacity as a function of the liquid depth of the reactor and the HRT we uh, are operating in continuous the reactor. Uh, the inclined uh, lines are for different HRT. And the colored lines are the goals of or the different goals for uh, uh, microglutan removal. For instance, to obtain a 70% microglutan removal, we have to work below the curve, the, the blue uh, line, okay, in this area of the chart. For instance, in, in the case we would like to remove the 80% the of microglutans using a liquid depth of 20 uh, centimeters, following the red line, we, sh we should use a hydraulic resistance time of 30 minutes. With these conditions, we, we can calculate uh, in the vertical X, we, we can calculate the treatment capacity, the maximum treatment capacity. In this case, is four cubic meter per square meter of reactor and per day. With this data, if we take into account the flow rate of the effluent to treat, for instance, uh, 400 uh, cubic meters per day, the ratio between the flow rate and the treatment capacity gives the surface of the reactor, in this case, 100 square meter. So the uh, main geometry of the reactor is given with this uh, methodology. We have the surface and the liquid depth. Okay. As for the cost of the treatment, uh, that was the, the last uh, uh, item we need to calculate when designing a, a, a process. Generally, the treatment at acidic pH is uh, cheaper than working a neutral pH. In this case, the cost of neutral pH is higher due to the very high cost of the EDDS, the complexing uh, agent, the iron complexing agent. But uh, overall, we can conclude that the total cost is mainly affected by the reactant cost, much more than the amortization cost due to the, the reactor and the cost of the construction of the reactor. So the main cost is the reactant cost and that the final cost will depend on the process target. This is very, very important. We have no cost general uh, or, or no general cost for advanced oxidation processes. We have specific cost for specific process target. And then to finish this uh, uh, short talk about the photophenton process, I would like to show you the first demonstration plant for uh, uh, tertiary treatment of uh, wastewater, uh, secondary effluents. In the frameworks of the 
Life Ulysses uh, project, we designed and constructed a railway pond reactor with an area of 100, uh, 100 square meter and the liquid, uh, the liquid, uh, liquid uh, depth can be changed from 5 to 20 centimeters. Uh, here we have a general view of the reactor and here a partial view of the reactor okay with the sensor the cure and this is the real f -wind. I'm going to show you the first test in batch carried out, carried out a few days ago just before the uh, the holidays the eastern holiday to start the reactor we use the most control uh, condition uh, that is pH 2.8, uh, 5 mg per liter of iron, 50 mg per liter of hydrogen peroxide, and we added uh, 100 mg per liter of acetamipril as a model contaminant in order to follow the kinetic. The reactor volume was uh, 10 cubic meter and the liquid depth 10 centimeter. And this is the uh, actual secondary effluent from the wastewater treatment plant of the city of Almeria. And here we have the, primar the, the primary results of acetamiprid removal. Mm -hmm. We obtain a high removal. This uh, uh, this compound is very hard to be uh, removed in the, in, by, uh, by photophenton. That's why we use. If we are, are able to remove acetamipril, other microcontaminants are removed first. The results follow the expected kinetics, and we obtain very encouraging reactors. Because to finish, I'm going to show you the final water. Well, how was uh, the water after the treatment? This is the same, oh, that is the secondary fluid previous to the treatment and after the treatment. Thank you very much for listening, for your attention, and I want to thank to all the people of um, the group, the water treatment group at Fiesol who have been working very, very hard to reach this uh, demonstration plant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Sánchez Pérez. Uh, now you can, uh, I want to, to invite to the to the student in the in this webinar to use the the chat of the meeting to transmit all the all the question for the for the speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm going to put one one the, the first question to give time for the for the people to to send question. Uh, uh, you have you have uh, show different ways to to apply photophenton process, and at the beginning of the presentation, you have talked about the different uh, treatment um, depending on the concentration of uh, of contaminants in the water mm -hmm. for high concentration and for the low concentration. I understand that for the high concentration, we are talking about, for example, industrial wastewater. And in the case of low concentration, uh, we are talking about uh, the secondary effluent, uh, especially. Mm -hmm. And in this sense, uh, we could have uh, two different uh, uh, focus for for the application of this technology. And I would like to: What do you think about the the most important limitation for the implementation of the photophenton process at industrial scale? In, in both uh, cases? From my point of view, uh, 
right now the the most important limitation is the regulation because uh, the, the the regulation are not uh, encouraging the treatment of uh, the tertiary treatments in the wastewater treatment plants to remove micro uh, micro micro contaminants and uh, with industrial water um, we have different uh, strategy that uh, can be uh, alternative to the, the to, to the photophenton uh, process but uh, really from my point of view what is uh, now uh, slowing down the advance of this technology is the lack of uh, a stricter regulation mm -hmm. okay thank you we have uh, one question in, in the chat i'm going to Tengo la mano eh, César. Oh, excuse me, César. Please, César, you can ah, ask. Thank you. Congratulations, José Antonio. Beautiful, beautiful. I know very well you have been working during a long time in this field, and now to, to see beautiful application is very exciting. Congratulations. I have a little question. Is the following. Mm, what do you think about the possibility today of taking the surface you use for your reactor, not for the reactor, but for, for the photovoltaic uh, panels? Because to, today these panels have efficiency of 20, 30 percent. And to take advantage of this electricity, to work in most concentrated way with lamps because also the, the, the LEEDs lamps today are very cheap, very efficient. Then what do you think about that? That could be a future option? Yes, of course, of course. Uh, the, uh, the future uh, is coming and the uh, LEDs are now among us okay so we can work with uh, leds at uh, uva radiation with uvc are not so easy but uh, or to, to reach 250, uh, 244 nanometers in the leds is very expensive now yes but now the cost with uh, close to uvb UVC at uh, 279 nanometer. The cost is competitive now. So we can develop uh, an intensive uh, photophenton treatment with this kind of LEDs. I, Indeed, I, we are working, we are working in this in this uh, line as an alternative to solar. Yes. Are, are your system absorbing the visible also? And in the you don't need the UVC. Be, uh, you know, you need only visible and one part of the uh, and the UVB and UVA. Beautiful, because that could be very important for the region where there is not so much play, place. You know, in yeah. the region you need. It's okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, one well, we have uh, more question more in, in in the in the chat. Uh, and uh, since the process is very rapid, can you comment on the feasibility towards the understanding of mole to mole reaction between pollutants and the radical generator of pentons? So, sorry, could you repeat the, the question? Question is, uh, is uh, if you can explain how is the, the reaction mole to mole mm -hmm. between the pollutants and the radical generate? In the in the photophenton reaction, and the feasibility towards the the understanding to more to more the relation between between both. Hmm? Yes, the, the the system the, the from a chemical point of view, the system is uh, very complicated. We have many reactions, a myriad of reactions. If we want to uh, to consider more to more every reaction it will be impossible. So the only way to have a kinetic model is to 
put attention only in the main reactions, uh, discarding the secondary reaction, although those are, that are less important. Uh, for example, in a real wastewater, we have we, we can have 100 or more uh, microglutans at concentration of nano or microgram per liter. But in the same uh, medium, we have 10 or 20 milligram per liter of uh, dissolved orga organic matter. This dissolved organic matter reacts with the hydrochloric radicals too. So we need to pull all this reaction in only one reaction, organic matter with uh, uh, the radicals, and only to pay attention to uh, a few microglutans, a few key microglutans to follow the kinetics. It's impossible to follow all the kinetics. Okay. Thank you very much, Jose. We have uh, two questions from from Professor Lipuma. That's the, um, the first one is, uh, why can we never reach 100% uh, removal of the contaminants with photophenton? It depends on the, of, of the level of the, of the concentration, of the initial concentration. When, when we work with very high concentration, uh, tens of hundreds of milligrams per liter, uh, it's much better and cheaper to, uh, to look for a partial mineralization in order to increase the biodegradability and remove the organic matter with a bio treatment than uh, continuing the uh, photophento, the, the advanced oxygen process up to the complete mineralization. And when we work with uh, macro contaminants, uh, we have to keep in mind that the micro contaminants are 1,000 or 100,000 times lower in concentration than the remaining organic matter in the secondary effluent. So it's uh, almost impossible to reach the mineralization because the treatment times will be very large. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> Professor Lipuma has a second question. In, in the plot used to calculate the treatment capacity as a function of liquid depth, um, it shows the, there is the, the strand lines for different treatment times. Mm -hmm. Are these lines always straight or, or not? In the, the application of the model, the, the, in the region of interest are, uh, are uh, straight, the lines are straight, okay? The, the slope is, co is uh, constant in the region of interest, but we have not uh, extended the model to other regions. Okay, there is one question more from Paula. Mm. She said that uh, she's working in, in the University of Luxembourg, uh, working on the, on the use of photophenton with the complex uh, EDDS with a, with a ratio 1, 1, 1 to 1, but using uh, lamps of uh, UVC, of uh, I don't know if mercury lamps or not, but yeah, it's, it's medium pressure lamps of UVC. And she said that uh, she has uh, some problem with the complex because the iron is deposited and attached on the lamp surface. Yeah. Do you have any idea why can be having that or increase the turbulence? Turbulence. This yeah. is to increase, increase the, the agitation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and there is uh, one more, please. Uh, Okay, I would like to know uh, if it is possible to perform the same process in a CPC pilot photoreactor. Of course, of course. Mm. CPC are, are a, an alternative to reservoir reactor. Mm -hmm. 
in fact, this is the, the origin of petrofenton is the, the CPC, you know, the race yeah. weapon rat. Okay, up to now, this, we don't have more questions in the chat. Jose Antonio, if we do not have uh, more questions, I, I would like to thank uh, Jose Antonio for the really nice presentation. And uh, before you leave, uh, uh, I would like to inform you, as I wrote in the chat, that the next webinar will be held on May 23 uh, by Professor Cesar Pulgarin. If Cesar is still uh, in the meeting, I, I would kindly ask him to briefly introduce in one minute uh, his webinar. So I think this could be really useful for PhD student and young researcher. Yes. Uh, what what is the date? Twenty three. Not uh, that. I that's... think twenty three. Yes, we will inform. Uh, I, did, I I probably did a mistake because uh, it's twenty one. Twenty one. May tw May ten twenty one. Is Friday because twenty three is. Uh, uh, Cesar, we will check because in your email uh, you wrote yes, yes. 23. I did, but I, 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 did a, I did a mistake. It's okay. I, I, I we will correct that. But uh, the, I would like next time to discuss with you about uh, some errors I, com I I did myself in my careers working with advanced oxidation process. Then I will share with you these errors, and from my experience, I would like to propose not a general rule because you know nobody has a general rule to give you some tips that could maybe avoid to you to do the same errors I did at the beginning of my career concerning that that will be concerning the conceptual limitation the engineering limitation the way to sometimes to be too much over enthusiastic uh, regarding the application. You know, sometimes people work in the laboratory level, uh, at, the, uh, at the bench, uh, at the laboratory level with uh, 10 milliliters of water. And from that, he will propose a treatment on thousands of cubic meters per day in a white western treatment plant. You know, these kind of things I all people did we did at the beginning of our career I, I would like to stress this point especially for young uh, PhD student and young researchers okay th thank you Cesar I just checked the agenda yes is the yes, 20, I did 20, it. I 23 is Sunday so it is 21 I, I did a mistake because I probably well, I did a mistake I with with April yes I want this is 20, 20 20, 21. 21. 21, excuse me. We will deliver soon uh, the information for registration, okay? Yes. Okay. So, bye bye. Thank you on myself. Jose Antonio, when you uh, have the link to the video, you can send me for dissemination. Of course. The registration of the video is. Uh, <laughs> yes, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. José Antonio, sí. tú que no te has ido, dime, ¿y cómo haces con el hierro luego? Porque ya pararon, yo tenía algunas preguntas, pero como yo sí. pregunto tanto, te lo sí. voy a preguntar a ti, oye, ¿y cómo, qué, qué impacto tiene en el, en, el, en, el, en el proceso la recuperación del hierro? Que a veces la recuperación es con del tejido muy costosa, ¿no es cierto? Porque tú necesitas poner a pH neutro, decantar, después necesitas... No, no, no. Aquí, ¿cómo Mira. haces con el hierro? César, te, a ver si te puedo... Yo vi que las concentraciones de hierro eran muy pequeñas, entonces no, ustedes no recuperan el hierro, ese hierro se va y lo utilizan en el riego. No, 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 lo retiramos. A ver si encuentro dónde tengo yo... Adiós. ¿Seré capaz de encontrar la presentación? Eh... La, la diapositiva. Voy hacia atrás. La estoy buscando, César, para mostrártelo. Bueno, pero si no la encuentras, me la dices, tú la lees sí, sí, y me la dices, tengo. la cuentas, que yo te escucho. La tengo y te voy a compartir la... Bueno. Eh, qué pena, comparto. qué pena, qué, qué pena que, que... Bueno, pero no importa, es así. Sí, ¿Sí? Sí, sí, no, sigue, sigue, no. Qué pena que se acabó como tan rápido. Yo... Eh... Pero bueno, tú, nosotros podemos quedar un rato ahora y preguntando. No te bueno. preocupes. 
Dime entonces, dime entonces, tú, tú, yo veo ahí que tú lo recuperas, ah, o sea que tienen que, Mira, claro, después tienen este que neutralizar. Este es el vídeo de, este es el vídeo de la operación con 15 centímetros de profundidad. Ya, ya. Entonces tenemos una columna, en este caso la, físicamente la estás viendo, de neutralización, en este, porque era un, un experimento a pH ácido, Ajá. en el que en la columna, en la, en la columna le metemos mmm, calcita, ¿no? carbonato cálcico. Claro. Y entonces en la calcita el, 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 el agua se neutraliza, sale a pH 6, 6 y poco, Sí. ¿De acuerdo? Sí, no, no está optimizado todavía, pero a pH 6 es prácticamente neutra. Y el hierro se queda retenida, retenido en el, en el cuerpo de, del filtro. Ya. Y lo mismo queremos hacer para pH neutro, porque el hierro que precipita, como conforme se va degradando el complejo, sí, sí, sí. ese hierro lo podemos retener en el filtro. Bueno, y me imagino que más tarde van a hacer ensayos de capacidad de esos filtros. Porque claro, como... ahí lo tenemos aquí. A ver si te enseño la planta. Es que de planta tiene pocas fotos. ¿No aquí tenemos filtros, ¿lo ves? Sí, ya lo veo, sí, el azul. Sí. Esos son... Este es el tanque de alimentación del reactor y este es el tanque de salida, del agua de salida. Ah. Y ya. este es el tanque de filtrado. Si sí, vamos a filtrar siempre el agua. Bien ya. para neutralizar o solo para filtrar. Y después, bueno, me imagino que luego van a estudiar la posibilidad de recuperar ese hierro, no sé o no, ese hierro después... No, porque es muy barato, no merece muy... la pena. Yo creo que es más caro recuperar. Claro, es muy barato y no es, y, no es, y no es problemático ambientalmente. No, 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 no es un residuo tóxico. Oye, y la última preguntita, si te me permites, entonces, eh, con relación a los estudios de ciclo de vida y todo esto, tú sabes que hoy en día... Todos los sistemas tecnológicos en Europa tienen que pasar por eso, es decir, sí. de que los ciclos de vida, entonces ahí la integración de la, de la, de la energía grises, las contaminaciones grises en el agua oxigenada, en todo eso, eso como eso también lo están trabajando, lo tendrán que trabajar un día, ¿no? Si, si eso quieren. está previsto dentro del proyecto Ulises. Este proyecto europeo, ya. uno de los grupos es especialista en análisis del ciclo de vida y lo vamos a hacer. Bueno. Otra, ¿Te puedo hacer otra preguntita más? La que necesites, César. Mira, eh, tú dijiste unos valores por metro cuadrado. Dijiste que por 25 metros cuadrados, más o menos, trataban un metro cúbico de agua. 4 por 100 y por día. Uh -huh. Eso cuando tú lo comparas, si hicieras con la misma superficie en reactores CPC, eh, ¿tendrías diferencias o no tendrías diferencias? Claro, claro. Es que en ese caso, mira, voy, voy hacia atrás. A nivel solamente de cantidad de cargas. Eh, claro, en este caso, caso, estos 4 metros cúbicos por metro cuadrado y por día es con una profundidad de líquido de 20 centímetros. Ah, son 4 metros cúbicos, así 25 por metro cuadrado para por metro cuadrado y por para, para tratar 25 metros cuadrados para tratar. Espera, yo anoto para tratar. ¿Un metro cúbico por día? ¿Estoy bien? Bien, 100 metros cúbicos por día. Sí, porque son 400... Ah, no, repíteme entonces, 25 metros cuadrados para tratar 100 metros... No, para tratar 100 metros cúbicos por día. Sí, 100. claro. Ah, claro, no, por eso era que yo estaba interpelado porque me equivoqué. Yo soy disléxico, <risa> me equivoco a menudo en todas estas 10, 100 metros cúbicos por día. Perfecto. Uy, esto es casi 10 veces más... Eh, esto es casi mucho más que el CPC. 10 veces, yo ni siquiera, yo estaba comparando con CPC, pero con TIO2, es casi 10 veces más rápido que los valores que yo tenía, pues con TIO2 ya no trabajo, pero para tener con qué comparar, es casi 10, 8 a 10 veces más las Exacto. cargas más rápido. Qué bien sí. eso. Sí. César, en el caso de un CPC, la, el volumen iluminado por metro cuadrado está en torno a los 10 a 11 litros. 10 11 litros por metro cuadrado, mientras que en un reactor Raceway, solo con 5 centímetros ya está iluminando 50 litros por metro cuadrado. Y si te vas a 20 centímetros de profundidad, estamos hablando de, de 200 litros por metro cuadrado. Esa, aunque la parte, la parte óptica no esté optimizada en un reactor Raceway, sí. que obviamente en un CPC sí que está optimizada la, la, la captación de luz, pero realmente como estás iluminando tantísima 
más agua, pues eh, realmente por eso la capacidad de tratamiento es tan, tan alta. Bueno, otra pregunta, muchachos. Ustedes, te, tú presentaste sistemas donde, el, donde había continuo, continuo estricto, es decir, que tú tenías una alimentación, eso iba y giraba en el reactor y salía por el otro lado el mismo flujo que entraba, ¿no es cierto? Uh -huh. Pero el reactor final, el grande, es un batch. No, no, el grande se va a operar en, en continuo también. Pero César. ahora, pero lo que presentaste es en batch, ¿no es cierto? Sí, lo que presenté en batch porque es el primer experimento, el primer test. Ya. Perfecto. Dime una cosa entonces con relación a, esa, a ese tema ahí. Eh, tú, bueno, eso ya me quedó claro. Permíteme que yo lo anoté por acá. Eh, dime una cosa. Eh, ¿Cómo anda? Eh, eh, el, yo creo que el único límite, esto lo veo maravilloso, José Antonio, entusiasmante. El único límite que le veo es la naturaleza de las aguas. Evidentemente no tienen que ser muy ricas en, en sustancias volátiles, tóxicas, en solventes eh, cancerígenos ni nada, claro. porque con la evaporación y, la, y el viento y todo esto puede ser problemático. Es decir, difícilmente lo aceptarían... Eh, eh, la Pero, legislación sí. para, para cosas así muy tóxicas, ¿no? Volátiles y tóxicas. Claro. Eh, en este caso, como son aguas de secundario de una depuradora, y no, no hay y problema. Está, no, no, no. está diseñado para tratamiento terciario de depuradora, sí. la agua eh, no tienen ese tipo de tóxicos porque vienen de estar expuestas al aire. Los, los sedimentadores secundarios están abiertos. No, tiene razón, no, en este caso no hay problema, pero yo estaba imaginando para otros tratamientos. Para otros digamos, tratamientos no... se podría ver la manera de, de cerrarlo. De todas maneras, lo que tú has comentado de, de los LED, y eso, nosotros estamos trabajando también. Vamos sí, no, pero, a, de hecho, ya tenemos datos y queremos mandar una publicación pronto con LED. Muy de bueno, pero no, no, no te obsesiones con el VC, porque es que hay con el Fenton. El fotofentón no necesita VC, porque tú miras, cuando miras el espectro de absorción del fotofentón, te darás cuenta que su, claro, su, su, con, su actividad lo mayor. Hacer, también. ¿Ah? Con, con, con ultravioleta A, lo, y lo hemos ah, hecho. Y eso, Tenemos y una aplicación también de hace unos años con ultravioleta A. Y eso sí Pero es más lento. Y eso que sí son baratísimos ahora. Sí, ahora, sí, inclusive, sí. Vi, vi en esta venta, en esta venta china, el, este, este, esta cosa de venta línea en China, Alibaba. Uh -huh. Que ya los ya hay VC LEDs también mucho más baratos. También sí. en eso ya han bajado los precios. Bueno, no. oye, tenía una última preguntita. Sí. Me, tú hablaste en la, cuando presentaste los mecanismos sí. que la, reac, la reacción de, 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 de transferencia de carga entre el, entre el, el hidroxiférrico. Eh, y, y con la luz para formar, para re, reformar el, el, el hierro 2, que eso uh -huh. era muy lento. Sí. Eh, esa reacción. Me, tú diste un valor en la página, en la página, ¿qué página? Se me, en la 23, por ahí diste un valor. Sí, ahí, en la página siguiente diste el valor, me parece, de la reacción 2. La cinética, sí, la constante. Eh, ya bueno aquí tiene la constante cinética de ser esta no no la 6 no no la que tú dices es la 2 no la 2 es la reacción de regeneración de, pues, de, ah. de, de regeneración del hierro 2 a partir del hierro 3 vuélvete para atrás donde tú presentaste en un, ya ya empieza de nuevo ahí espera espera ahí sigue 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 no no entonces aquí llega ahí ah ya ahí entonces dice que es muy lenta pero sí. El, el lente, tú tienes el valor de la de arriba, eso es como 700 y algo, ¿no es cierto? Esta, este valor es el que te he dicho antes, que es 4,56 milimolar por minuto. ¿La cuál? ¿La de la...? de la, la, de esta, centro, la, esta. la ¿Esta? 4, sí. sí. Y después dijiste que esta era muy lenta y esta, y esta es, es lenta. Esta, esta es, es lenta en comparación con esta. Con esa, pero tiene, ese valor lo tienes en la, en la 19, me parece. Vea la 19, la de la 2. Porque esta me imagino que es la K2. Ahí, ahí, ahí está. No, es que estas constantes no son. Espérate, me voy hacia atrás. Ah, ya, ya entendí, ya entendí. Ya. Eh. Eh, eh, la 2. Ah, no, es que estás con los complejos. Sí, no la tiene, no tienes el valor ahí. Aquí, es... pero el valor tampoco depende, porque el, de, el valor depende de la absorción de fotones. No hay un valor fijo. Estoy de acuerdo, estoy de acuerdo, claro. La reacción, sí, pero, ¿no? pero, pero es el orden de magnitud. Yo me la esperaba 
más rápida esa reacción. Eso tengo no, pero, pero no tenemos orden de magnitud de esta reacción en sí directamente. Mira, sí. la reacción 1, en este caso, lo que pasa es que no he querido detallar mucho más, es esta. La del, el complejo... Ah, no, 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 ya entendí. No, perdona, ya entendí. No, no, es que yo estaba hablando de la reacción clásica en el fotofentón ácido sí. con los, los complejos hidróxidos de hierro 3. Ajá. Que, que es un la mientras que tú estás hablando de la EDDS. Uh -huh. Ya, ya entiendo. No, es que esa reacción ácida, fotofentón ácida, pH 3, de sí, los pero esa reacción la tengo aquí, mira. Hidroxi, mira. hidroxi acuacomplejos. Eso te lo voy a enseñar, la tenemos aquí, pero no, no tengo el valor de la... A ver, ah, sí. justamente, sí, porque esa sí, esa, esa no, eso no, eso no, eso no es lento, esa reacción. Aquí, acá, aquí, aquí está la reacción. Tú dices esta reacción. Esa reacción, esa, la reacción 2. La sí, reacción 2, pero... pero esta reacción realmente depende del VRPA. Sí, sí. De bueno. hecho, este modelo ya no lo usamos. Sí. Este modelo está obsoleto, lo que pasa es que lo tenía en la transparencia y lo he dejado, porque sí. no quería eh, profundizar en los modelos. Nosotros los pH ácidos utilizamos un modelo actualizado de esto. Ya. Oye, entonces, much... El hierro 3 absorbe radiación y entonces las la constantes cinéticas directamente el VRPA. Ah, ya entiendo. No, 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 eso yo he trabajado mucho con los sistemas en laboratorio y tal. Y por eso me, me extrañé, porque es una reacción rápida, pero depende del flujo fotónico y tal. Pero sí, sí, la pero es esa... rápida, pero yo sí, en este sí. caso puse lenta en comparación con esta. Con la otra, con la otra que es instantánea. Porque lo que limita el ciclo de hierro 2 a hierro 3, este ciclo, lo que lo limita no es esta reacción que es muy rápida, sino esta que es lenta. Ya, eso mira. Sigue. Que... Sí, ya no, es que uno está acostumbrado a presentar eso más bien el fenton oscura con uh -huh. relación al fotofenton y ahí es al contrario. Es la, esa no. reacción es rapidísima con relación al fenton oscuro. A, a, a la, perdón, claro. la, la reacción del eh, cuando está oscuro, cuando no hay luz, eh, claro. que, que transforma, eh, que utiliza el agua oxigenada como reductor, sí. no como oxidante. Es esa es aún más lenta, lenta que esta, mucho esa, más, mucho más, más lenta. Más lenta. Ya, de acuerdo, pero cuando lo que comparas con esta. Eh, eh, sí. Esta más rápida que esa, ya. Justo, justo. Bueno. Pero en este ciclo, en este ciclo de las dos reacciones, esta es la rápida, la oxidación es la rápida y la fotorreducción es la lenta. Bueno, oye, muchachos, muchísimas gracias, oye. Yo ahora me voy a, a ya que viene, muy interesante, oye. Muy chévere, da posibilidades de, de resolver problemas y todos los felicito. Gracias. Una, un abrazo para ambos. César, un abrazo muy grande. Tengo pendiente contigo invitarte a que dé una charla. Con mucho gusto. Eso lo veremos luego cuando sea presencial o ya. Eso es lo que quiero. Estoy esperando ya a ver si, si es presencial porque sería un, un gustazo poder que, que viniera. Bueno, con mucho gusto, muchachos. Que les vaya muy bien. Un abrazo para ambos. Un abrazo, César. Chao, que estén bien. Chao. Hasta luego. Pues Antonio, there is a two questions more in the, in the chat. I don't know if you if you can read directly the chat or not. Tell me. There is uh, one question from Marie Clara Sterling. Mm -hmm. Considering... Well, uh, no, you got... Ah, okay. Um, she said, uh, considering increased uh, costs associated to the addition of ETDS and other iron complexes, mm -hmm. What is your opinion about the intermittent iron addition strategy to enable operation at neutral pH? Is that a possible alternative? Uh, with uh, Maria Clara, nice to, to, to meet you electronically. And uh, uh, greetings from Maria. I don't... Uh, we work some years ago with this strategy, with uh, intermittent addition of ion. But uh, finally, it precipitates. So you have uh, a lot of ion uh, precipitating in the medium. We, we have papers with this strategy. I think it's better to use a cheaper uh, complexity agent than adding uh, ion. 
Mm -hmm. There is a, one question more from Elisangela. Um, uh, can, can I make just a question? It was used any pretreatment, such as microfiltration or sand filtration, on the application on the large scale system, or the yes. filtration is just at the end of the process? Uh, there is a sand filtration just at the end of the secondary settlement in the in the wastewater treatment plant. The secondary effluent is uh, uh, sun filtrated before sending to the uh, photoreactor, photophenton reactor. Mm -hmm. Okay, and also Sandra has uh, Sandra Azate. Azate. Hello, Sandra from Almeria. Uh, ask us about the how how will you resolve the acidification or carbonate adjustment when you were working in continuous mode operation? With a uh, acidification chamber. Mm -hmm. Now it, it is installed in the, in the reactor, in the plant. Okay. I think with this last question, we we can conclude with the with the webinar. Thank you very much for everybody that has been uh, interested in the in the webinar, and obviously thank you very much to Jose Antonio Sanchez for this uh, special presentation, a very good, uh, a very nice presentation with the last uh, advances in the in the group. Okay. So thank you everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.